Others are getting close to that now. We're not quite there yet. But when they do merge, that'll be the post information age, because the information age doesn't tell you where you're going, per se. You're getting all the information. Where are you going? Well, where you're going with the conscious technology age is a far more enlightened civilization. Because if we balance, and this is a role for Korea, if we balance consciousness and technology into a yin-yang, into a healthy balance, that'll be good for the world. Now, Korea, Japan, and China have, according to the Western historians, uh, more accent, more interest, more awareness, more um, education about consciousness than the West. And the West has forced focus so much on the technology, it hasn't, it's forgotten a little bit of the consciousness, a little bit of the spirit and stuff. So you have an important role in this, this merger coming up. Now, we've already got these little contact lenses, as you can see, Samsung is a player, Google, over here is also is also a player. And it's going to be great competition, just as the previous speaker spoke about the iPhone becoming a big deal real fast. The contact lenses, once they're proven, will become a big deal very fast. So you can live in a virtual reality and an augmented reality and an internet-connected world all the time. So this might be what your eye looks like in the future. We're micro-miniaturizing, as I mentioned. We'll put these materials into our body. So we could possibly live a lot longer than we think. Because an awful lot of what we die from is stuff we didn't know ahead of time. In cancer, we talk about stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, cancer. And we intervene along the way to prevent it or try. We don't have this in other diseases yet. But with this kind of stuff in our bodies, it can diagnose much, much earlier and make us much healthier. We're also making artificial body parts. We've got the mechanical one, the 3D printed one, and growth in stem cells. We'll be able to replace our bodies parts uh, as we go along. Our clothing increasingly will become more intelligent, uh, monitoring our body. I, I apologize to my friends who have heard this story before, but imagine going to the airport in the future, maybe five years, maybe seven years, and they say, ah, here's your ticket. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't give you your boarding pass. Why? Well, we just got a notice here that the airlines, Korean Air, it, it says, I have to see you take two aspirin tablets before I can give you a boarding pass. And you go, why? Well, because your socks have communicated to your insurance company that your blood pressure isn't quite right, and if you take the pills, you'll be healthier. Because we don't want you to die on our airlines. It's bad public relations. <laughs> so imagine all the various bodily functions, the major ones, being monitored and being ahead of time. So you've got the stuff in the body, but also on the body. Jewelry is already in the process of becoming intelligent. Uh, the ability to have the mind, brain, robot, computer all interlinked now is the case. This man thinks and he picks up the ball with his robot arm. Uh, this is an old future. This is at least five years old. The person on the left, his hands are on his knees. He's not touching a mouse. He's looking at a computer game. He's playing a computer game by thinking, but not by clicking. As he thinks click, in another building, this other person has got his output in, as input to that brain, and his right hand, you'll see there, on a mouse, it clicks. He left thinks, right clicks. This is over five years old. Now, if we're going to augment our abilities to be more intelligent, what happens if we have a lot of people in the world becoming geniuses? Now, most people would say these two guys, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, back then, were geniuses. Think of what they have created in the world. Now what happens if we augment human beings and you've got millions, if not eventually billions of people are very intelligent with either stuff on the body or on the contact lenses. Now, specifically for Korea, you have a unique problem that Germany did not have when they reunited. 
You'll have all the problems that Germany had, yes. But the problem that they didn't have, East Germans were not starved. As you know, North Korea has gone through cycles of starvation. And for those studying the human development, the brain doesn't develop well if it doesn't have iron and protein at the early ages of three to five. Now, yes, a study just came out last week, you probably saw, that the average height of North Koreans is a little, but as the height was stunted, so the brain is stunted. So what do you do when you inherit a North Korea with a lot of people who are mentally retarded? Well, you're gonna to have to figure out how to augment their intelligence, because they're not moving just into an agricultural age, they're moving into a conscious technology civilization later. That's more brain power. So you're going to need augmenting intelligence for that merger. Now Elon Musk is hiring right now, you can try and get a job with Elon Musk, to make uh, a system that goes into the, into the brain. I'm a little scared, I like the stuff, the contact lenses, that's what I like. But in the meantime, some experimentalists will do this. So you have this thing that grows over the brain that connects you with the internet. And that's being developed now. So the whole idea, in one way, whether it's contact lenses or neural lace or some third approach, the idea of being having the brain connected to the world and the world connected to the brain seems to be inevitable for the future of ICT. Now the physical environment, I just came from uh, Dubai, working with the uh, RTA, the Roads and Transportation Authority, and they've agreed that all things that move just about <laughs> will have some form of sensor connected to a mesh network so the whole city becomes one integrated collective intelligence system that can diagnose problems and anticipate problems and have AI, predictive analytics on what's to be done next in the whole city. I suspect that we will be doing that worldwide. And our robots will also be connected so it's not only humans and cars, <laughs> but also our robots connected to everything in the Internet of Things. Now, so imagine that you have your artificial uh, intelligence form in an, an AI or a guy that goes out at nighttime, goes running around the Internet, negotiates some smart contracts, maybe blockchain system or something like that, and wakes you up in the morning and says, you know, you've got 45,000 things that you could do today. I've taken the liberty of condensing this down to 25 things. Here's 10 that you want to do because it's just cool, it's just fun. And here's 15 that allow you plenty of income for the day that you can take the rest of the evening off and go to a very expensive restaurant here in the hotel. That seems to be inevitable. You know, the early profile stuff that we're getting with, with, with Facebook and so forth is just preliminary. But imagine your own private AI. Now, I was over in with the BBVA, the Spain bank chain, and it, uh, it looks like one of the things that they may be doing as a competitive advantage, I did not sign a non-disclosure agreement, <laughs> uh, is to give to their best clients their own AI avatar. Why? Because every morning they're going to know the best investments. So the richer they get, the richer the bank gets. So it will be in the interest of banks to give you your own AI avatar. Like in the early days of the internet, it was in the interest of companies to give you your own email account. Now this will evolve to the point that you have a duplicate you. Now you know about body scanning, that's digital stuff. Once it's digital, then you can manipulate that into becoming a duplicate you. Which means a doctor can try on drugs, try on treatments on your duplicate body. So you're doing what we call uh, computational biology so that you could actually have very good diagnostics, very good treatment programs tested before they give it to you. By the way, one of the problems coming up here on that is what happens if your duplicate self will live beyond you? So if you die and your duplicate self negotiates a contract and it commits a crime, who's at fault? <laughs> I leave that problem for you guys to solve. Okay, so the, 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 we're becoming cyborgs, and our built environment seems to become conscious, and so this is a conscious technology uh, merger idea. Now, every age has got its product, power, wealth, place, or time. 
Uh, in the agricultural age, of course, it was the product of food and resources. Religion controlled the society, pulled it together. Wealth was determined by how much land you had. The place was, of course, the land resources. War was fought over location. Time was cyclical. When you plant, when you reap, nothing was new under the sun because nothing really was new under the sun. It's a circle. And then we go to the industrial age, which does not replace the agricultural age. It builds on top of the industrial age, uh, agricultural age. In the same way that your frontal brain did not replace your old reptilian brain, it built on top of it. Okay? So you still have religion, but the power, but the new power grows to the nation state. Wealth moves to capital, the place is the factory, war is fought over resources, and time becomes linear. In the information age, which is where we're involved in now, of course, the product is information services, like this conference, like your Financial Times, and so forth. Uh, the power then moves more to the corporation. This is the argument we're having right now between some unnamed countries and some unnamed corporations. Uh, we have some conflicts going on, uh, but that's a transition of power. You move to wealth, becomes access, places the office, perception of war. Unfortunately, we've got the information warfare going on right now. Uh, and then time becomes flexible. What happens next is the product becomes linkage, like the socks that I mentioned before. I mean, if you can connect socks with an airplane ticket, what else can you connect, right? There's a tremendous growth as to how do you connect everything. Take a look at anything around your civilization. What hasn't been connected? That's a growth opportunity. Power moves to the individual because the individual can choose what corporation, what business, what kind of activities worldwide at a moment's notice. Individuals don't know quite their power yet. But they'll get smarter as we have moved our education systems. Wealth becomes being. So if you have all this sort of access, your augmented intelligence, you've got all this stuff going on, what's next? You are next. Your self-actualization, developing yourself. If you're boring, then you're poor. Right? The excitement of life, that becomes a new kind of wealth. Uh, place becomes motion because you go into different dimensions of cyberspace and so forth. Unfortunately, war is fought over identity. We'd like to prevent this. I won't talk about that. And then time becomes an invention. If time is a measure of motion, like my watch, there's no time in there. The only thing in here is, is, is motion, dependent on the sun, right? So what we're really doing is talking about changing a sense of motion. Well, if you have the ability to go into old artificial uh, intelligence or games of, let's say, the, the 12th century, and you're able to do some science fiction sort of stuff with your friends, etc. And then walking down the street, negotiating a smart contract, all of this is the same, quote, quote, time. What is your sense of time yourself? It becomes quite flexible. So, one of the key things on this is whatever product you're looking at in the future, if it's a physical product, imagine how it can seem to be more conscious. And if it's a human, resource, imagine how that can be more small intelligence on your body. So this gives you a general framework for future planning. So one of the this this whole thing can go badly too. You know, people you hear about the idea of brain hacking. Well that's a serious problem. That's a deadly serious problem. Right? Um, so if the masters of technology are technocrats uh, and they believe that you can solve all the problems with technology. It's sort of like Silicon Valley. What do I have to study the rest of the world? I'm inventing it. <laughs> You're right. That's the attitude. But then the masters of consciousness are mystics. And I don't mainly mean religion. I mean the idea of feeling the connectivity of the consciousness of the universe and yourself. Uh, well, they, they believe that consciousness solves the problems. So these are two prejudices throughout all cultures and all times. The tool makers and the consciousness sharers. Right? Now, since these, these two great massive trends I mentioned are merging, how well we can get the mystic and technocrat to collaborate could determine how good the conscious technology civilization will become. And this brings us back to Korea. You have more of a relationship of high technology and consciousness, awareness, than most civilizations in the world. Uh, 
also Japan, just like this, and China. So when, you, when your speaker was speaking about taking some leadership, not just a catch-up economy, but now you're moving catch-up to leadership, this is, in my judgment, one of the important, unique things for Korea. Everyone is part technocrat and part mystic. How well we balance these within ourselves can determine how well we live inside such a civilization. Now, a pause on artificial intelligence. There's an awful lot of misinformation, or confused, some mis just confused misinformation. Because people make statements, like you know, Elon Musk and others, that, oh my God, when artificial intelligence happens, the game's up. We are just like little cockroaches or little dogs in a, in a, in a, in a, in a game played by artificial intelligence that we have no idea, right? And then when you had Go, uh, AlphaGo defeating the champion, a lot of people here said, oh my God, but the game's up. Well, no. That, the, the Go is an artificial narrow intelligence. And you, if, even if you change the rules in Go from 19 by 19 grid to say 20 by 20, AlphaGo would not win. It wouldn't know how to do it yet, <laughs> right? So the point is, it's narrow intelligence. It's machine learning. You know, the driverless cars that you'll hear about coming up and all that, that's all machine learning, that's all true. But the AI that drives a car does not diagnose cancer. Right? So this is narrow intelligence, and that's what we have going on right now. So when someone says when artificial intelligence arrives, it has already arrived. Narrow artificial intelligence has already arrived. The next one has not. Not unless the military intelligence knows some things I don't know. But so far, the artificial general intelligence has not arrived. Artificial general intelligence is different. It acts like you do. If you get a novel problem, you call your friends, you do your Google search, you do all this sort of stuff, and then you make a decision. That's what general intelligence does. You, give, you can't give a novel problem to neural intelligence. It doesn't know what to do. It's not defined the terms. It, 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 it won't do anything. But general intelligence will search the Internet of Things, the sensor networks, uh, every AI that narrow AI it can get its hands on, it can do some robotic telephone, call, all that stuff to learn. Which means it can learn and learn and learn in general every moment around the world. That is a much bigger economic impact than narrow intelligence. Most of the studies in the future of work <laughs> talk about narrow intelligence. How many truck drivers will be unemployed? Right? That's important. But that's not general. General is a big deal. Um, now, the reason that you get the nervousness from some people about artificial general intelligence and artificial general intelligence is because we don't know how long it will take to go from narrow intelligence to general. That could be 10 years, maybe 20 years, we're not sure. But we know even less about how much time it will take to go from general intelligence to super. Why is this a big deal? Super intelligence sets its own goals. General intelligence, you tell it to solve this novel problem. Super intelligence, it's just doing it itself. It becomes independent of humanity. Yeah, and that's what science fiction is warning about. You saw that, that uh, movie, Ex Monica, where the woman cons these two guys' egos and gets out? That's super intelligence. She set her own goals, learned how to manipulate these guys, manipulated them, and then left. That's super intelligence. And that's early super intelligence. We don't know how fast super intelligence can evolve. This is unknown territory. Um, just so you don't get too nervous. <laughs> One of the things I would suggest is to think, you know, the old story, if you can't beat them, join them, right? If you can't beat them, join them. So if you can't beat super, the earlier we integrate our consciousness and technology, our AI, and evolve together, then if we go to super, it's with us. We're going to super as well. But if we keep it separate, then the warnings of Stephen Hawking and the rest of them are, are very plausible.